So when working with pastels, you have to remember a couple of things. And one is to start with your lightest areas. It's really easy to make things darker, but it's a little harder to make them light. So right in around the eyes where I want those areas to stay really light, I'm putting a white base in. The second thing that you want to remember is you're going to be working in layers. It's never just one color. No surface on the planet pretty much is one color because they reflect. They reflect light and it's that light that creates the, the colors that we see. And the reflections of light bounce off of other objects and so we get a lot of different colors in there. Um, starting in the eyes, I'm kind of using a, an amber color. Um, it's a yellow, kind of a mustardy yellow color, um, just because that's what I have in my set. If I had one that was a little more golden, I might use it. And then I'm going to work in layers. Um, there's some areas that are a little bit more uh, reddish brown, so I'm going to use kind of a reddish brown on them. This one's kind of a light one. I don't have a darker one or I'd probably use it. And I'm just putting it in the top part um, and then kind of blending it in, letting it blend. And now here's a little bit darker brown and I'm going to use that in that top and just a little blending with my fingertip. This is one of the few medias that I actually do use my fingers to blend. Most of the time I like to use blenders and you can use blenders with chalk pastels, um, but I typically use my hands on chalk pastels. Now these are chalk pencils right here, and this is that kind of yellowy amber color, and I'm just going in the bottom um, of the eye and adding a little light. Um, eyes light enters in one angle and it bounces out in another and so you usually always get that highlight in the eye and then the the light where it kind of bounces back out. Um, working on the fur starting with some base colors kind of that tawny yellow color again that amber and very short um, I keep my movement short in the face his fur is short in the face and I'm gonna layer colors. So I get kind of a base going, and then I start looking at some darker areas. This is kind of a, a really dark, um, almost a burgundy, but maybe not quite as red um, and purpley. And I'm just paying attention to where I see some of these dark and light areas, and just starting to build my base colors in there. Now, this looks a little strange. It is a light pink, but you gotta remember it's going to blend with the colors underneath, and so it's gonna help a little bit peach that face out just a smidge. And then I'm gonna add some more of that tawny back in where I want it, but it just tones it down so it's not quite so um, brilliant as the eyes are. And then a little white here and there to clean that area up a little. And then blending again very lightly. I don't press very hard. It's a very light touch. Usually I pay attention to the direction that the, the fur grows in and I kind of sort of blend in that direction a little bit. Especially if I'm trying to keep texture. There's not as much texture in the face, so I did a little bit of circular blending. Adding a little of that lighter reddish brown, orangey brown. A little blending again. So this is a darker, um, it's not black, it's like a really dark brown, and then this is a really dark blue. Um, you got to remember, we're not trying to be a photographer, we're trying to be painters. 
um, and I love to play with other colors that um, work in those reflected areas. And so I'm using a dark blue in here. And you'll see when you get it all blended out, it works great to create some shadows. And then there is also a um, cream color that I'm gonna go now and add into some of the areas to bring it out a little, bring a little texture up. By building your colors with multiple, you know, different colors, you'll keep more texture than if you just went in with the overall basic color and just tried to draw it out. You lose a lot of your uh, texture and your form. So this is just using that cream to bring out areas that I want higher up. And then I'm going to use the black. Now that I've got most of the eye area, black is always the last thing I add. So I got the colors around the eye where I want them, some of the blues, the cream built up. So now I'm going to use um, a black pastel pencil to detail out the eye. I usually only use my pastel pencils in areas that I really want to get a clean edge or a clean line. Most of the rest of the drawing is done with the soft pastels. A little bit of blue, um, dark purple, dark blue here, right around the eye. And of course, cleaning that out, I'm going to use a little bit of that uh, white just to clean my edges and to add a little highlight. To the eye. Right there. And then bringing in my pupil with the black again. And cats typically have really high pupils. They sit very high in the eye socket. Now, a little light to bounce back out. And then kind of repeating the process on the other side. And I'm not going to do a play-by-play -play here for you, but you can kind of watch it and see the process here, layering in the different colors. Using the cream again, 